Hello everyone, welcome to lecture number one of my new series of integration. Now in this series, I'm going to cover all the important concepts and question which you need for the coming KVPY papers and IITJ papers, means in advance both. Now in this series, I'm going to teach you the things which you have never learned, okay, through any video or through books, which you have never seen. The shortest sick as well as with the concepts. So today's lecture is based on one of the questions which is being asked in KVPY 2012 paper. And this question is fundamentally really good. So the question is, if L is given as a number, which is equal to sum of cube roots, the numbers are starting from 2012 to 3011. And R is again one more number, which is given as summation of cube roots of 2013 to 3012. Now, I is one more value is given in the form of integration. Integration is x to power 1 by 3 with respect to x. And the lower limit is 2012 and upper limit is 3012. Now the problem is i i can calculate directly but how to compare the value of i to l and r because in the option some comparison is given so i have to find which option is correct so let's start now before i solve this question please feel free to pause the video and try the question now here we have to compare capital l capital r and capital i capital l and capital r are written as a summation of cube roots of the numbers so that is one hint for me here so i'll show you what is the hint and R, I is given as integration of x to power 1 by 3 d of x from 2012 to 3012. Now, here I can integrate x raised to power 1 by 3. There's no big deal. But the problem is, how am I going to compare with L and R? For that, I'm going to write I as summation of cube roots of number. The moment I write I as summation of cube roots of number, immediately I can compare with L and R. That's the hint. Now, if we want to write I as summation of numbers of cube roots then we have to learn some basics here so integration from first principle now integration generally gives you area under the curve since this function is above x-axis within the given range so i'm going to consider let's say this is our function y is equal to f of x now i'm going to derive a general expression now if this is your function you're going to calculate area under the curve now area under the curve from x is equal to a to x is equal to b i'm going to divide into small small rectangles so let's say the width of the rectangle is h now i'm going to take from a to b i'm going to take many rectangles like this so here i've taken many rectangles starting from x is equal to a to x is equal to b we're going to calculate the area under the curve so if you add up all the areas of each rectangles in the end you'll get the area under the curve that is the end value of the integration right so here if we're taking the width as h here so h will be equal to the final minus initial upon number of strips we have taken now here i'm going to take the h value because the numbers are varying the numbers are differ by actually this is 2013 now here the number are varying you can see the difference between the numbers as one so the width i'm going to take this as h is equal to one now from here number will be number of strips will be b minus a i think b a i'm going to decide as 2012 because we are starting with 2012 here and we are ending with 3012 so b i'm going to take here that is 3012 now if we calculate n that is 3012 minus 2012 will be 1000 so we go we have to take here how many rectangles we have to take 1000 rectangles to calculate the integration now the final form of expression okay for integration so i can be written as or integration of f of x can be written as i'll write here the general expression integration of f of x d of x can be written as the width of the rectangle multiplied by the height the height is nothing but the functional value so i'm going to start with this value the functional value that is here will be f of a so the first height is f of a now the second height is as you increase the x coordinate from a to a plus h the functional value is going to change and for the next point the functional value will be f of a plus h i think so next value is f of a plus h so on if you go till last term okay so we have to take the site the site will be equal to f of a plus n minus 1 into h now integration of f of x d of x i can write this as h i can write this as b minus a upon n multiplied by the same expression so f of a plus f of a plus h and the sequence goes till f of a plus n minus 1 into h now in the next slide, I'll be continuing from this equation. 
Now I'm going to write i as summation of the cube roots of the number using integration by first principle. I think I've derived the expression in the last page. Once I write this as a summation of cube roots of the number, I'll be able to compare the values with L and R clearly. So here before starting, we are calculating the area from A is equal to 2012 to B is equal to 3012. Clearly our function is x is to power 1 by 3. Cube roots are visible. And one more thing, the number of rectangles or number of strips we have taken, that is 1000. We have derived this in the last page. Now, if you want to calculate the value of i, let's put the values here. So we'll get 3012 minus 2012 divided by 1000. And the value of the function are starting from f of 2012 plus f of 2013. And the last value will be one less here a plus n minus 1 into h so last value we have taken 3012 and second last to this one is f of 2 3, 3011 i think yes correct now let's put this values here so i will be equal to i think this is 1000 and 1000 will cancel out with 1000 now we only have the values here so we have 2012 raised to power 1 by 3 plus cube root of 2013 and so on till the cube root of 3011 now in order to compare see i we can right now we can compare with lnr so right now i'm going to try to write i in the terms of lnr for that i'm going to multiply and divide multiply by 2 on both sides here on both sides i'm going to multiply by 2 if i multiply by 2 on both sides we'll get this as 2i is equal to now i am writing this as 2 series see every number will be repeated twice because i'm multiplying by 2 so I can write this as sequence of two series that is 2012 cube root plus 2013 cube root and so on till the last one that is 3011 cube root. Now one time I've covered this number, one more time I have to cover this number. Now I'm not starting the series from 2012. Although I have to take it one more time but for R I'm going to start with 2013 cube root. And all the numbers again I'm going to take 2014 cube root so on till 3012 cube root now you're thinking that we don't have 3000 uh, we don't have 3012 here 3012 but I'll do one thing I'll add and subtract this number although we don't have this so extra what we have here is 2012 cube root that is surplus and we are adding so that means we have to subtract here 3012 raised to power 1 by 3 here. So 2i, clearly I can write this as, see if you, it's very much visible here, this series is L and this series is R clearly visible. So 2i will be equal to L plus R. Now the remaining number is cube root of 2012 minus cube root of 3012. Let's say its value is equal to k. Now for sure this number will be less than 0. If this number is less than 0, I have written 2i is equal to L plus R plus K. So you are subtracting something from L plus R. So that means it's very obvious that 2i will be less than L plus R. So this will be our final answer. And